G'day and welcome to the very first episode of Who the Hell Is. Uh, this is going to be our new series, uh, just giving you guys a bit of an overview of the uh, the people and the personalities who are surrounding the topic of UA UAP and UFO. Um, so we're going to be talking about whistleblowers, we're talking, talking about politicians, uh, other researchers, journalists, scientists, people like that. Um, a lot of people will have a general idea of who these people are, but we'll just touch a little bit more on their history um, and, you know, sort of give you a, an idea of what we feel about them, you know, whether they're trustworthy, how the community, how, what the community thinks of them. Um, and yeah, just maybe do a little bit more info on, on certain people. Uh, we'd always love, uh, as always, we love uh, suggestions. Uh, if you guys have any people that you think uh, are worth taking a bit more of a look into, then we'd love to hear it, um, either in the comments or we'll put a, an email below in the, in the um show notes and um yeah so let's get into the very first episode of who the hell is most people with a general uh, interest in this topic are probably going to have heard the name tim burchett before congressman tim burchett um but he's going to be the topic of today's talk uh we'll go into a little bit of history uh and hopefully we'll get to know him a bit better so uh without any further ado who the hell is tim burchett go ahead if you pay like our salary, you go ahead. <laughs> if something like that out there exists, and there's something from another planet or another universe or whatever, and if they were to say, oh, yes, this is what we think it is, would we have riots in the streets? People Absolutely not. And that's, what, what do you think would happen? I think it's the arrogance of this, the arrogance of our government. Well, why don't I mean, you think that would happen that people would, would literally... Why would it? Why would it? Over 55, more people believe... And UFOs and believe in Congress. I mean, look at the polling that's out now. 55, 58, depends on who you talk to. They believe there's something else out there. And these are legitimate polls. I've, I've stopped every every weekend. I'm back in Knoxville. Man. I'm talking about educated people, professional people. I'm on airplanes. I'm traveling all over the country. People will stop me and tell me about an experience. Decorated veterans. These people, why would they risk their reputations and careers over something that they're lying about? It's just, it's too big right now. And... And I don't believe they can keep their 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 thumb in the in in the in the dam too much longer because people are coming forward at too, too rapid of a rate. Yes, sir. Thanks. So that was just a little sample of uh, what Tim's all about. Uh, he's obviously got quite a uh, a decent sense of humor and, and a character about him. Um, probably well, mo one of the things most well known for him saying is "Dag gummit." That seems to have caught up a lot, uh, caught on a lot in the community. Um, but yeah, your first general feel for me personally, and I think Corey as well, uh, of Tim Burchett is that he's a pretty real guy. Um, he seems to, you know, be pretty honest and, and want a lot of transparency, uh, especially in this uh, um, area, the UAP area. Obviously, being a politician, it's going to want to say and do all the right things. I mean, most people know what politicians are like, um, but at least uh, in the UFO UAP arena, he seems to have some pretty good intentions uh, and he's really leading the push. I'd say he's one of the most forward facing uh, politicians on this topic, especially in the US. And um, he's sort of leading a little cadre of people. Um, yeah, I don't know what you'd call them, but uh, it's a it's a bipartisan group with with others like uh, uh, Luna, uh, Representative Luna and Representative Moskowitz, who are from both sides of the aisle. So. Uh, it's really good to see that it seems he can put old old uh, differences aside and come together uh, with some people from across the aisle, which is is really promising to see. But uh, but now let's quickly get into a bit of history about Tim. Uh, just touch on it quickly because it's not super important. Uh, I don't feel necessarily, but uh, it's good to know a little bit about him. So let's just start with. Uh, what he actually does. He's the um, Tennessee's second district congressman for the Congress of the US. Uh, he was a former mayor of Knox County uh, down in Tennessee and basically came up through state politics, um, as so many politicians do. Uh, you know, you, st you start at a local arena uh, and you work your way up until you're into national politics. Uh, obviously, he's a Republican, if, if that hasn't been mentioned or isn't obvious. Uh, but uh, He's, he's had a couple of little interesting things along the way with his career. Uh, one of the ones I found was kind of interesting is that he introduced a roadkill law, uh, which basically was, uh, in a lot of states in America, it's a, it's legal to, to take and consume roadkill, so you're not wasting food. 
but he's just made that a bit easier in his county. And, and it basically came from a story where one of his constituents uh, went to to butcher and give to a, a poor family a deer that they'd hit. And and they the guy who hit the deer and gave the, to the poor family after he butchered it uh, actually got a fine because he didn't go through the proper channels. So so Tim's that was one of Tim's first things that he sort of got behind. Um, look, he's a very conservative politician. He's a Presbyterian. Uh, he's quite a religious guy. Um, he's he's had a pretty strong anti drug stance, and he's backed um, he's backed the outlaw of uh, Salvia Divinorum. Uh, I won't go into too much what that's all about, <clears throat> but you know, as a conservative politician, that's not really that much of a surprise. Um, and when he was the mayor, he he supported a lot of local business, which I think is actually a very good thing. Uh, he seems to be very community minded, um, and and yeah, wants to help out the sort of the everyday man. Uh, he was one of the Republicans to contest the 2020 election. Whatever you think of that, whatever, however you want to think of that, I, look, it could be all party politics, uh, but generally I don't feel like he's necessarily caught up too much in party politics. He seems to to want to, uh, you know, follow his, uh, his heart and his mind in a lot of things. Uh, and he did uh, vote to end the military action in Iraq. Uh, I believe that was the latest military action. Um, there was a little bit of controversy when he was mayor... I believe running for mayor, uh, his wife or now ex-wife uh, misappropriated some campaign funds. Uh, you you can't really tell; it's a bit of a he said he said she said, but it seems like yeah, his his wife may he may have trusted his ex-wife a little too much, and and it cost him. In the end, there wasn't any really huge black backlash about it. It was investigated, and it was I think basically the idea was that if he could. Uh, even up the the sheet, you know, get it back into zero or back into the black, then, um, you know, basically, yeah, he's, uh, the blame is on the wife and, and the commission that was uh, investigating that didn't really see any uh, reason to, to punish him further on that. So perhaps one of the most interesting non-UFO related things about Tim Burchett is that he was one of the eight Republicans who voted to oust uh, Kevin McCarthy, who is the who was the uh, Speaker of uh, the House of the Congress, um, it's an interesting little saga. We won't dwell too much on the politics of it, but uh, I think from Tim's point of view, it really was a case of uh, transparency and and being open. As he he seems to be a stickler for that kind of stuff. Um, uh, the way it breaks down, as as far as I understand it, he was very much against. Uh, CRs, uh, which is a continuing resolution, something in basically means business as usual. Um, if the Congress can't get their stuff together, then they just pass a CR and and things continue as usual. And but other thing, I think it's really a big part of it was the omnibus uh, funding bills. So that basically means if there was something that a Congressperson wanted funded, um, and then there's another thing that they didn't want funded. A lot of the time, they'd be packaged into what are these uh, what are called omnibus bills. So you can either vote for it, um, and then you'd have to push through the thing that you don't want, as well as the thing you didn't want, um, or reject it, and then you don't get the thing you did want. But you know, you also get to keep away what you didn't want. Uh, so I think basically Tim and, and a few other guys really wanted a single issue funding bills, uh, which would would really allow them to crack down on overspending uh, in a lot of the departments of the American um, gov governmental system. For example, the Department of Defense. Clearly, there's really not a lot of oversight uh, that has been for the last well, probably 20 years uh, for the Department of Defense. I, I've, I've heard it said many times that they've never passed an audit. So I think that was probably a big part of what Tim uh, Gates is another one there. Uh, that's what their problem with that was. So now the interesting part, obviously, in regards to our channel and our, our little community with UAPs and UFOs. So Tim is a part uh, was a part of the recent hearings, uh, pretty much spearheading the hearings. Uh, um, it was an oversight committee. Uh, the Subcommittee for National Security officially was the, uh, the name. I mean, it's a lot longer name. I've just shortened it there, but you can look that up. Um, and yeah, they had the, the first uh, public hearings um, in the Congress with whistleblowers under oath. That was uh, the Graves, um, Fravor, and Grush uh, 
hearings and yeah obviously everyone's watched a lot of footage there's been a lot of talk about those kind of things um tim was the main guy i, I believe uh as a lot liaising with a lot of other people as well obviously i said before he had a cadre of a bunch of people who were interested in this topic but he seems to be at the forefront of it all um a little interesting tidbit that i found out was he's been into the ufo slash uap topic for a long time uh when he was young uh, he walked into a library one day and there was a, a table with a display of books. One of them was on UFOs and he picked it up and, and has been interested ever since. But I've also read that he's also um, had constituents contact him uh, and his office regarding that topic and, and it's been a topic of concern. Uh, and so he's sort of taken up, taken the reins on that one and, and tried to move the ball a bit further down the track. Um yeah, and that's kind of where he's at at the moment. He, he's right in the middle of this whole UFO UAP thing. Uh, he doesn't um, he doesn't seem to be too, you know, gregarious or, or forcing anything. He's still doing a lot of other stuff. You know, you can see him with a, plenty of other interviews talking about things other than UAP. But uh, he's one of the guys who seems to be really solid on it. Now, as for what people and what I and what Corey and the community generally think, he I think he gets a pretty good rap. Um, he seems very upfront when he's when he's speaking. He's obviously pretty charismatic and funny. Uh, people love saying "dad dad gummit." Um, it's a nice little catchphrase. Um, I just think it's good. And look, I might not agree with all of his politics. He's a, he's a super conservative, uh, religious politician, but it's nice to see. Uh, I've said so many times before that they can do this bipartisan thing. And I think I have heard him speak to that before and that he wants, he wants cooperation on this from beyond, uh, from the other side of the aisle, because it's very important. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of money being spent and very little oversight being had. Um, and obviously, you know, that's one of the really big things that he is all about. Um, so the last thing I'll touch on with Tim, uh, as a major point, is uh, his involvement with the recent skiffs. Uh, if you followed the hearings, then you know about the skiffs. We've done an episode on the skiffs. Um, I just wanted to do a quick little uh, Tim's reaction. He'd just come out of the skiff. So uh, here's, here's what Tim thought of the skiff. What did you learn in there? Are you satisfied? With Absolutely you? nothing. It just proved my point that, um, I mean, the federal government learned how to do this during the world during the Second World War. you got to imagine Oak Ridge National Laboratory, Manhattan Project, thousands of people working on an atomic bomb, and less than 12 actually knew what it was, and that was kept secret. I mean, these guys are just the classic, um, you know, the, it's like a stovepipe, man. They just got their little bit of information, and it doesn't go, and that's the way they keep this... It's, you can say it's disinformation, you can say whatever, but, you know, if I got to hear one more time, I don't know what I don't know. And I, it's just, it's another layer of the onion, and we threw another layer, and we know where not to go, and it's with these cans. But it's clear to me, I mean, these guys were telling the truth. It was said many times. Most of these folks are patriotic Americans. They're doing their job, but their job, the confines of their job limit them on what they can say to us um, because they just... They just don't know. They got to go, and the way they do it is they keep you in a um, so limited that they could go swear under oath and be tell. They could take a lie detector test, and they're telling the truth yeah. as they know it. So yeah, as as I think we all probably expected, or, or people who have an idea of it, um, yeah, there wasn't a lot that was going to come out of the DODIG skiff. Um, fortunately, uh, as of the recording of this, uh, we have the um, ICIG skiff coming up. Um, which hopefully it, it, with Monheim, hopefully should be a little bit better. Look, Tim was pretty skeptical. He, he, he seems to know the lay of the land as far as cover up uh, and, and some of the historiosity of, of the said cover up. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll hold out a little bit of hope for the next skiff. Uh, I'm sure we'll do another uh, podcast, uh, at least reference it. We might do another episode on it. But yeah, so that's that's basically that's where Tim Burchett's at right now. Um, I think he gets a pretty good rap. I think it's fairly well deserved. As I said, I don't agree with his politics a lot of the time, um, but he's a community-minded guy. He's a family-minded guy, um, and he seems to want oversight and transparency into some 
into one of the topics which has had the least amount of oversight and transparency in the history of topics as far as I'm concerned. So uh, thanks, Tim. Um, I hope you are sincere in what you say. Uh, you've been pretty solid so far. And, and yeah, that's who the hell Tim Burchett is. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about uh, Tim Burchett, Congressman Tim Burchett. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions, as I said at the start, please uh, forward them on to us, uh, either in the comments or there'll be a uh, an email down below. And yeah, thanks for hanging with us. Uh, I'll do another one of these hopefully soon and we'll see you next week for the regular podcast. Cheers, guys. Bye.